Hi, I'm Carrick James, and before I describe my impressions of the new flagship K33 camera, I'd like to give you some backstory. I've used Pentax cameras and optics since high school, and all through my long pro career, starting with the first automatic camera, the Screwmount ES, in 1974, through the K2, MX, and LX, of which I still have two working bodies, the MZS, and later, when digital came on strong, the IST-D, K10, K20D, K7, K5, K3, and K32, and lately the KP. I've also used the great Pentax 67 film system and loved their move into medium format digital with the 645D and Z. And of course, I adore the K1 Mark II full frame system, which leads me to a thought about the K33, which I'll share later. So I'm a travel journalist, meaning that I shoot and sometimes also write magazine features and book chapters. For 30 years, I've specialized in travel, doing stories for airline and general travel magazines, guidebooks, National Geo books, and of course, for travel companies and destinations around the world. I've had more than 200 magazine and book covers for clients like Arizona Highways, Nat Geo, Adventure, Sunset, Via and Compass, and many more. I also teach photo workshops with nearly 70 taught from Panama to Alaska, New Zealand to Switzerland, Hawaii to Mexico, and all over the American West. I'm the 2020 Society of American Travel Writers, Travel Photographer of the Year as well, but I'm most proud of being a brand ambassador for Rico Pentax since 2007. Now to my thoughts of the K33 and also about using the APS-C sensor line as opposed to full frame or medium format. I always match the system I take on the road to the project at hand, and so I might choose the 645Z for large prints or for billboard clients who need that really large file. The K1 Mark II for architecture and general travel of all kinds, and in the past I'd frequently add the KP or one of its predecessors when shooting sports or wildlife, especially longer lens subjects. After testing the K33 for the past several weeks, for epic desert landscapes, cultural icons on Route 66 in Arizona, and active sports, etc. in Mexico, that old formula is blurring. This K33 can do it all. My genuine first reaction to seeing the IQ image quality of the files from the K33 on my 5K monitor was that I must be looking at images from the K1 Mark II. The K33's hyper resolution, detail and sharpness, coupled with its tonal scale and color are simply stunning to me. I never set up test images in a studio or use charts. I much prefer to test in real time and space with the subjects I'm paid to really shoot. So using the K33 was a revelation. I always tell people that the best camera for them is the one they'll actually carry in the real world, on the plane or boat or parasail. Of course on the trail, without worrying about weight or weather. And this is where the K33 shines, especially when matched with the WR lenses, of which we now have many to choose from. I'd like to emphasize here that I vastly prefer an optical viewfinder, and I always have. The ability to quickly assess the action within that bright, clear eye space, undistracted by screen glare and other issues, helps me make split-second decisions on composition. Moments and gestures never happen twice, not the same and I simply cannot create images I like as fluidly using a mirrorless body, like the old K01, for example. The viewfinder in the K33 is very bright and beautiful to view, with exposure data shown in an uncluttered line below. Your prime camera should be an extension of your personal vision, with easy viewing, intuitive, and quick to access potential controls, so it becomes almost effortless to pursue, frame, and record images precisely as you wish. This is all about making your very best images. So simplicity of design and clarity of viewing are essential. The K33 excels here. Once you discover that state of seeing clearly and decisively with a camera, that's the camera body you'll take with you to Patagonia or Paris or down into the depths of the Grand Canyon running the Colorado River. That's where I'm taking the K33 this spring because it is a seriously rugged, well-sealed body, perfect for the dusty and sometimes wet conditions I subject my gear to while on assignments. I mentioned a similarity to the K1 Mark II earlier, and when I first picked up the K33, it instantly felt like the K1's little brother. 
and that's a very good thing. This is a strong and solid camera, and the grip design gives me great hold and balance. I would imagine the battery grip will enhance that inherent feel and be quite welcome with longer lenses especially. The K33 body weighs 820 grams, or 1.8 pounds, easily carried on my shoulder or around my neck, as I did while parasailing several days ago over Cabo San Lucas. While 200 feet over the Sea of Cortez in a parasail, a gray well reached in the distance and I was able to record a good sequence of images while floating in space. That's confidence in taking your camera anywhere you go. The quite incredible IQ is due to the new sensor in large part, but I believe also the new state-of-the-art image processor. This combo makes for faster capture and recording of the raw files to the memory cards, and there are two. But it also means the effective ISO range is expanded greatly over the KP. I shot images in near darkness of a holiday train ride at night in Arizona and made usable images for the client at 51,200 and 102,400 ISO. That is astonishing. And my rough comparison is that ISO 12,800 on the K33 is roughly equivalent to ISO 3200 on the K1 Mark II, a bigger sensor. For those who shoot the stars or Milky Way, any kind of astrophotography, this must become your camera of choice. The K33 is quite shootable in poor light, low light, and darn near no light. Much anticipated by many is the higher frame rate of 12 frames per second and also the redesigned and enhanced autofocus system. I tested both while shooting kite surfers in Baja, California, dipping and dancing above the deep blue sea. I had a very high rate of technically fine images to choose from that particular session and I'm very excited to shoot baseball and wildlife with the K33 as warmer weather returns to the American Southwest. To sum up my real-world impressions of the new K33, the wait was worth it. This is a quantum leap in IQ and is clearly the best APS-C ever made by Ricoh Pentax. I cannot imagine finer IQ from any APS-C, in fact, and that changes the whole paradigm of what I'll carry on location or you'll carry on your long-awaited photo trip. Taking the K33 and three to four of your favorite lenses means much less weight and bulk Always a welcome prospect for international travel. For example, I took the 10 to 17 super wide and 11 to 28 Pentax zoom plus a 16 to 85 ED and 55 to 300 millimeter HDDA with me to Mexico for my final test shoot. Three of those are WR lenses and the weight of my kit was the lightest I've ever carried. Greater mobility is always welcome in my line of work. The K33 is built like a tank and will be a reliable pro body for years to come. The hand grip design is perfect for my medium sized hand and it's easy to hand hold at longer exposures when you can't use a tripod. I didn't even scratch the surface of the five user modes but look forward to customizing them for me. As a travel photographer, I literally shoot everything under the sun and stars plus indoors, so versatility is key. If you have a wide range of APS-C format lenses as I do, this is the camera to make them work best for you. I'll be carrying the K33 on my future assignments and hope to see you on wilderness trails or in the streets of Venice. And thank you for listening to my impressions of this landmark redesign. It's way more than a standard upgrade, but whatever you use, get out and make new images and enhance your visual skills.